uh, let me break it down. Uh, so when we rotate uh, uh, the device, two things must, ha must happen in the background. First, of course, we have a change in resolution. But as you can see here, unless we uh, manipulate the image to adapt to this new orientation, the display processor uh, will try to draw from this origin, and that will mean that it will have to either stretch the image or maybe crop it for it to fit in the renderable area. Uh, so by manipulating the image, by performing this rotation, we move the origin to the right place, and this is what we, the user will expect. Uh, let me do it uh, with a bit more detail. So let's say we rotate this uh, device. Uh, first, there is a change in resolution. So as you can see, this is just a matter of hiding some detail in some areas, exposing some other. And then, unless we actually rotate the frame, uh, it won't look as the user expects. And this is very obvious. Uh, you might think, why didn't I have to worry about this until now? And the reason is uh, this has all been happening under the hood uh, by OpenGL ES drivers. They were um, being able to detect these uh, orientation changes and perform this for you at no, almost no cost. However, Vulkan drivers uh, simply cannot make the right assumptions uh, to do this for you. And that means that the responsibility of rotating the frame falls directly onto the application. Uh, still, most uh, presentation engines will claim support of different orientations, but that doesn't mean that this uh, comes for free. In the case of Android, uh, the Android compositor will perform an extra rotation pass if the application hasn't done the rotation. And this extra rotation pass is quite costly. It might not directly impact FPS, but it will definitely take power and, of course, impact battery life. The recommendation, therefore, is that you move the rotation to the application, something that we call pre-rotation. So you don't need that extra pass. You are basically drawing everything at this new orientation, which makes the compositor pass redundant. And in the code, it is a matter of monitoring the orientation of the surface. And it is also when you are acquiring a new image, you can detect a swap chain out of date error. And when you recreate the swap chain, then you just need to ensure that the pre-transform value in the swap chain matches the current transform value of the surface. If you do this, you are communicating to the compositor or presentation engine that the application is taking care of the change in rotation, in orientation, and nothing further is needed. And this is what the sample exposes. As you can see at the bottom, we have a checkbox to enable and disable this pre-rotation path. Uh, of course, if you are doing pre-rotation, that means uh, in most cases, what you're doing is um, modifying the projection matrix in the vertex uh, uh, shader. So it's, it's, it doesn't introduce any extra passes. And then at the top, we show, the, in this case, the write and uh, read stalls, uh, which are cycles that the Mm, GPU is waiting for some uh, load store operations because the memory bus is busy. And in this particular device, the reason is there is a um, separate block that is handling the rotations and making use of this memory bus. And uh, as you might notice, uh, these uh, benefits are not as big on this video because actually the screen recording um, application is also making use of the memory. But I have a device with me running the uh, demo live, so if you're interested, I can show you after the talk, uh, that sometimes we hit up to 90% reduction in memory bandwidth, which is, of course, good for battery life. Uh, a, another caveat is that uh, this might not be the case in all devices. In fact, um, increasingly more devices include a display processor that is capable of performing this rotation in hardware, which, again, has no cost. But you can simply not assume this uh, will be the case in all devices. And in those that don't, uh, this kind of optimization is where uh, it plays a bigger role. And another uh, sample is the one dealing with uh, attachments in render passes and how to correctly set the load store operations. When you are setting a load operation, you have several options. You have a load, clear, or don't care. And in load, what you're saying is that uh, how the GPU should allocate memory. Uh, in this case, uh, we, are, we want the memory to be preserved between render passes. And uh, that has its use cases. Uh, most of the time, uh, though, you won't need the previous contents. So you can basically clear the contents with a uniform color, uh, which is the load up clear. And don't care, you are treating it as undefined. 
The idea here uh, in the tutorial, we take you through these three options and we explain uh, when to use which. And this is very important because, as was mentioned as well in the panel earlier, um, this can uh, go into a very costly um, read and write operations that are essentially not needed. So just make sure that you use the right one for the right case. Uh, similarly, for store operations, you have a choice between store and don't care. And in the case, for example, of the depth attachment, most of the time you won't need this in further passes, so you can also set it to don't care. And the sample allows you to play around with different combinations of these values and monitor the effect uh, they have on the bandwidth again. In this case, uh, you can uh, sort of estimate how much bandwidth you're saving using the data that we also display in the GUI at the bottom. You have the resolution, you have the bits per pixel, and the current frame rate. So you can estimate around uh, 300 to uh, 400 milli uh, megabytes per second, and that corresponds to the, the change in the curve that we see as we play a uh, toggle between load and clear and store and don't care. And this is, of course, for an uncompressed frame. And uh, speaking of uh, frame compression, the last sample uh, I wanted to talk to you today is the AFBC. This is an ARM technology, the ARM frame buffer compression. It's a protocol and format for compressing frame buffers. And this is not something that you have to explicitly enable in Vulkan. This is, uh, if, if it is supported by the device, you, will, you should take uh, advantage of it at no cost. But the problem is there are certain combinations of uh, initializing your images, image views, that may make AFBC um, not, not capable of, of kicking in. So in this tutorial, what we go through is the, the setting up of your swatching and images, and if there are certain features that you don't really need. Just make sure that you are setting the right values for to take advantage of AFBC, which, as you see in this case, uh, as I enable AFBC, you can see a reduction in uh, bandwidth, which roughly corresponds to 30% uh, 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 savings. Uh, next, I want to talk about the framework that is underlying these samples and how you can create your own samples as well. So as I said, we take benefit of the cross-platform, um, and, and you can run it uh, on desktop for debugging. Uh, we also introduced some sort of abstraction, but in this case, we didn't want to create like another game engine, right? We, what we're doing here is just provide the right level of abstraction so that the samples are very easy to read, and that we expose the behavior that we want to overwrite to demonstrate a particular best practice. Uh, we also take advantage of some of the tools that the ecosystem provides, uh, like a Spurvy Cross for shaded reflection, and we use it to automatically generate some of the um, structs. And we also uh, integrate a GLTF importer, and hopefully this will be useful for you to import your own assets or scenes and run the samples on them. Uh, our own uh, entity component system also allows us to give behavior to some components like the first-person camera, and the scene graph, we're still working on it because we want to use it to show some optimizations like batching, interleaved uh, attributes, and uh, front-to-back rendering. So for a, a simple Hello Triangle application, you might see something like this. You have to set up your um, Vulkan objects first. And in orange, I outline the dependencies between them. And this is something that you will have to manually set up yourself. But with our framework, what we try is to do some of this for you and handle this in a dependency hierarchy. Again, as I said, with Spervy Cross and GLS Lang, we can also parse the shaders. And in blue, I highlight many of the objects that we can pre-populate for you with straightforward information like shader stage and type. So then, when you have this object set up, uh, you can then start to record in the, into the command buffer. And we also give some helper functions to keep, uh, to keep it to a minimum, the sort of um, um, housekeeping that you need to do with dependencies, for example. And uh, we provide certain abstractions that allow you uh, to combine like, images and image views into render targets. And then these ones make up a frame. And for a simple uh, triple buffer application, then you have three render frames in your render context. So in an example like this one, where you have multiple render passes performing shadows, off-screen post-processing, and then final composition with the GUI, what we try to do is make the sample very readable and hide away much of the um, uh, boilerplate. We also have some helper functions for begin and ending a frame. Um, for example, begin frame deals with things like swap chain recreation. 
so again, uh, this framework, what it aims to do is to still keep it uh, very close to the API so we don't uh, magically do uh, many things for you. What we do is try to expose the right uh, behavior at the right time. So each sample, if you need to, for example, in the load store operations, uh, override this particular render path creation, then we make it very explicit and very easy to read and follow along. In terms of samples, uh, we also have a hello triangle sample. Uh, this one doesn't do any of this um, abstraction for you, so you can see when you get started uh, exactly these first 1,000 lines that you need to get going. And then from there, we take on the other samples that uh, hide more and more. Uh, we also have a sample uh, showing the benefit of pipeline caches and another one uh, going through how to set up the pipeline barriers correctly. And these are or some of the other samples that we have in the backlog. But since we released it at GDC, we are having some people cloning and giving us feedback. And we have more requests, so we'll be uh, reprioritizing this. And of course, since it's open source, I encourage everyone to check them out and give us feedback or even uh, pull requests. Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning, we also have our own uh, tools for performance profiling. And uh, also at GDC, we presented a new uh, set of uh, performance analysis tools in, under our mobile studio. So as I said, our mobile studio, uh, these tools are now targeted to Android developers. So this is a shift in focus for ARM since we usually targeted our tools to uh, silicon partners and uh, device manufacturers. But now we are focusing on developers and the main requirement for this market is that developers want to focus on developing their game. So it, tools should be easy to use and easy to deploy, particularly on off-the-shelf devices. So no need for routing, for example. And the advantage of some of these uh, performance analysis tools like our mobile studio is that they give access to a much wider range of uh, performance information than just FPS tracking. Uh, counters and sensors built on the device uh, give you access to logical events, such as um, cache misses or memory traffic, and even analog behavior, like the thermal condition of the device. But why should you care about performance? Uh, reason number one is um, creating an uh, appealing game, right? Uh, user retention. Uh, is uh, very clearly correlated with performance. Uh, analytics data from some of our game partners show that just an increase in um, 25 to 30 FPS uh, translates into a 50% increase in user retention. Uh, secondly, we also want to target a wide range of devices, and this means making our game run efficiently on both a mass market device and the super latest high-end phone. And this means, uh, well, on high-end phones, you might uh, reach um, console quality graphics, but you are always under this 2.5 watt uh, power envelope. So you need to ensure that you maximize your, the visual impact of every joule you spend on either uh, processing or memory bandwidth. In terms of why optimize for uh, ARM CPUs and Mali GPUs, uh, we have a large installation base. Uh, we are actually present uh, CPU technology is present on 95% of uh, smartphones and tablets. And last year only, we shipped more than 1 billion uh, chips containing Mali GPUs. Also, ARM is working hard on introducing features that may help uh, developers maximize their performance uh, with the budget uh, power available. And things like Dynamic Queue that uh, combine uh, big cores with high peak performance with little cores with lower peak performance but that are much more efficient uh, provide this sort of uh, functionality. So our mobile studio, uh, it contains uh, four tools, although only two of these are uh, in the bundle that we released uh, at GDC. Uh, Streamline, which is our system profiler uh, for CPU and GPU performance and Graphics Analyzer, which is our API debugger for both OpenGLES and Vulkan. As a separate download, we also offer the Mali offline compiler. This is for uh, statically analyzing shaders. And also, we are working on Performance Advisor, which will come early next year. And this is our solution to uh, automating tests for uh, your continuous integration workflow. So I'll go into this in more detail now, uh, starting with Streamline. It consists of three core tools. We have a, a software analyzer for uh, identifying hotspots in the application native code. We also have a viewer for event viewer for if you have annotations in your application or uh, if you have instrumentation. 
and the core functionality is the sample-based profiler. So with Streamline, you can uh, perform a live capture of your application and uh, see in real time all the different values for the uh, performance counters available. And you can, um, as you profile, you can very quickly identify where the bottleneck is, if either your application is CPU bound or GPU bound, and in case of being GPU bound, if you need to maximize your efforts in optimizing vertex or fragment. So once you have an idea of where to look at, you can also run your application through the Graphics Analyzer. Graphics Analyzer will capture uh, every API call and allow you to step through uh, all the render state and the output uh, so you can see the difference between what you're telling the GPU and what the GPU is actually doing. And we also uh, allow you draw call by draw call to see the results uh, in terms of geometry or what you're being rendering. And also, we have uh, debug rendering modes that allow you to see uh, overdraw or shader utilization. And uh, regarding shaders, uh, you can also run them through the uh, offline compiler. And this gives you, uh, well, first of all, it checks the syntax of the shader. So it gives you an idea uh, that your uh, shader is sane. And then it gives you the longest critical path and breaks it down into different functional units. So you can see if you need to optimize the shader in terms of arithmetic or load store or texture operations. And this is actually also integrated in the graphics analyzer. So then it's very easy to sort the shaders from the heaviest to the least heavy. And since Android does not imp uh, impose a specific level of uh, data access in, in all devices, we find a situation where not every device is uh, supported off the shelf. But that's why we are putting together a list that we have in our developer website with all the devices that we have tested internally and that we know for sure uh, that the tools run well. And if, uh, you have, uh, if you're a device manufacturer and you want to be added here, then we also have a set of conformance tests uh, to, to add, and we intend to keep adding, growing the list. And this is what the roadmap looks like for the rest of the year. We have a focus on uh, ease of use and on, as I said, adding new devices uh, to, to our support list. And you can download our mobile studio for free uh, from developer.arm.com slash mobile studio. So uh, to recap, uh, we have uh, a set of resources that we hope prov prove useful to learn Vulkan and to make sure you get the best practices right in your engine or in your game, uh, starting with the best practices uh, for mobile developers in GitHub. This is, as I said, open source, and we're still working actively on it to keep adding new samples. Uh, this all came out of our PDF uh, best practice guide for OpenGLS and Vulkan, and uh, we will be getting more content out of that into the live demos. Uh, as I said, the tools are available on developer.com slash mobile studio. And if you want to know more, more about the tools, this was just a taster of a webinar that we are running uh, in a couple of weeks on uh, April 23rd. Uh, this is being run by one of our performance analysis experts, and it will go in much more detail through both Streamline Graphics Analyzer and how, with real examples of how you can use it uh, for a particular uh, need. Uh, we also have uh, blogs on that touch on the different tools. And if you have any questions or you want uh, us to give you a hand with performance analysis, we are also reachable at developeratam.com. And of course, the compulsory uh, we are hiring message. Uh, we have uh, several positions in Cambridge. We are looking for team leads that will focus on optimization for game engines and on developer education. So if you're interested, also grab me after the talk. We can give you more details. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions? Hello. Not Hello. sure if you can answer that, but uh, is it pos possible to query whether a device has this uh, hardware rotation feature or not? Um, I don't think it's possible to query directly, but you can. Uh, if you run our sample, you will see. Uh, if you, when you toggle between the two modes, uh, if you see any difference in performance, that will be an indication. Yeah, but uh, I have to test all the devices. Yeah. Uh, another thing, um, 
Now, from the top of my head, I cannot think of a specific query because it's just a matter of uh, uh, Android developer options allow you to force GPU, comp GPU composition, for example, but um, not from Vulkan itself. Uh, you can monitor the current transform, but um, and, um, as I said, uh, you can also query if the presentation engine supports uh, the different rotations, but if it says it supports it, it doesn't mean it supports it efficiently. So it will do the rotation for you, but it might have a cost. OK. Maybe you add this to your supported device list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Well, if there's no more questions, let's thank the speaker one more time. Thank you.